Pastor Jordan here. We are continuing our sermon series in the book of 1 Corinthians. And I hope you've been reading along with us in the Bible plan and watching the devotional videos. Today I want to read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And Paul is really continuing on from chapter 3 where he is addressing the situation where people are taking pride in certain leaders. They're saying this leader has everything. They know everything. They got the best teaching, the best revelation. And Paul has actually been facing a lot of people that are bringing opposition against him, or they don't want to hear from him anymore, or they don't want to hear from another preacher. And so Paul starts off here in chapter four. He says this, he says, this then is how you ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the mysteries God has revealed. He's speaking about all the leaders, all the Christian leaders, is that you should regard us as servants, as pastors and teachers in the church are servants. And he wants to make that point very clear, is that they're not special people that should deserve special treatment, is that they, yes, they should be respected and maybe they should be not mistreated for sure. But he says that we're servants, is that we're servants. We've come to serve. And the way that we teach and the way that we preach and the way we communicate God's word is to serve you, the church. And I pray for that is that as I'm preaching today, that it would serve you, that it would be a blessing to you. So he continues on here. He says, now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. I care very little if I'm judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself, which is quite incredible is that he's not worrying what people are saying about him. It says, my conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes. He'll bring to light what is hidden in darkness, will expose the motives of the heart. At that time, each will receive their praise from God. Now, brothers and sisters, I've applied these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit, so that you may learn from us the meaning of the saying, do not go beyond what is written. Then you will not be puffed up in being a follower of one of us over against another. You know, this is such an important thing is that even today, the church we belong to, the group of churches, the denomination we belong to can be such an issue of pride in our heart. And I can remember, you know, growing up in the denomination I, I went to, and I remember being sent to this Christian school that was a different denomination, different church style. And I can remember thinking like, they just have so much to learn. And that's the issue that Paul here is pointing out, is that they are refusing to learn from other believers, other teachers, because they believe that they know everything. And Paul brings them back to this point, which is a key point. It's just jumped out me and I want it to really stick in our heart. He says that this, in verse 6, he says, Now, brothers and sisters, I've applied these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit, so that you may learn from us the meaning of the saying, Do not go beyond what is written. Do not go beyond what is written. You know, as Christians, we need to be so careful about this. If we are not getting time in the Word of God, and that's why we press so much and push so much at Church 365 is to get into the Word of God, is we can develop our own opinions and think that they are found in the Word of God. We, we, we can remember certain things and say, well, I remember, I think that verse is in the Bible. I can remember being at this ministry school and getting in this heated argument with this other Christian over a particular topic. It was a controversial topic at the time. I can remember saying that, no, the Bible says this. And they said, there's no Bible verse that says this. And I can remember going to a room and picking up my Bible and going through, you know, looking, looking, looking for this verse that didn't exist. I felt it existed. I wanted it to exist because it would prove my point but it didn't exist. What Paul's saying here is that we need to learn the saying is do not go beyond what is written, is what is written in the word of God. And he speaks to the pride of the Corinthian church is that they felt they already knew everything, is that there's nothing else to learn. And as Christians, we need to have a heart that is teachable, a heart that is always ready to learn. It doesn't matter how young the person is, how old the person is, is that when the word of God is preached, that we have a heart that is humble, a heart that is saying, I want to be pastored. I want to learn. And what Paul's dealing here is the issue of pride, where they've been Christians for some time now, and they felt like they had nothing else to learn. They knew everything. 
And we can develop that as Christians, this attitude where we think we know everything. And all of us still need to be pastored today. All of us still need teachers in our life today. There are still things I need to be taught from the Word of God and retaught and relearn from the Word of God. And so I need to have a humble attitude. I need to have an attitude that when the Word of God is preached, that I have a heart that's saying, God, I want to learn from your Word. I want to experience your Word today. And that's what Paul's saying here is that if we will develop this attitude and really learn this saying is do not go beyond what is written, we won't have pride in one teacher or one preacher over against another. We'll learn that we can learn from everyone as long as they're going to the Word of God and they're preaching from the Word of God. There's not one preacher or teacher that has a corner on the gospel, has a corner on revelation, is that God wants to speak to us and through us. And what Paul's pointing out here is that there's multiple teachers here, multiple styles, and he's saying that is that we can learn from all of them. And his issue is really dealing with pride in the church. Pride where we think we know better and we know more than someone else and there's been seasons in my life where the enemy has come up where i've developed this pride thinking i know more than someone else or we're doing it better than someone else and that's what paul's dealing with here he says that we need to learn this thing is do not go beyond what is written in the word of god and so our thoughts my thoughts and your thoughts is do they line up with the word of god are we willing to submit them to the word of god that's what Paul was encouraging the churches that they'd come out of a worldly lifestyle. And they're going to come up with some pretty incredible thoughts that they think are good thoughts. Thoughts when it comes to marriage and purity that maybe it's good for me not to marry. That, that's their thought, is that maybe it's good. That's a human thought. And Paul's going to give them what the Word of God has to say in the situation. And if we're not careful, we can come up with all this wisdom on our own. But the question we need to know and the question we need to ask ourselves and we need to learn is, is this going beyond what is written? What does the Word of God have to say? And so I want to encourage us today to get into the Word of God, to learn what the Word of God has to say, is that there's going to be all sorts of opinions out there, all sorts of wisdom that comes out there, but what does the Word of God say? And I hope in our heart that we would have a teachable heart, teachable attitude that would go back to the Word of God and say, God, what are you saying in this situation? I pray this in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you today. God, I thank you, Lord, for each of us, Lord. I thank you for the Word of God. And I pray, Lord, for a hunger for us, Lord. We need a deepening for hunger for the Word of God, Lord. I pray also, Lord, for a humility that when we go to the Word of God, that we go ready to learn. We go ready to receive God. And so I pray for an open heart, God, as we get into the Word of God ourselves, as we keep listening to sermons, God, for that we would allow your Word to teach us, that we would never go beyond what is written, never start to add things to the Word of God or take away from the Word of God, but we would go to the Word of God and see what you have to say. And I pray that you'd speak to us, give us revelation and wisdom, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.